This is Witchbase News for Friday the 8th of March 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week As Taranis is destroyed FDev confirm the requirements and rewards available for Titan destruction. The Elite Racers Winter Olympics is bringing organised parkour to the game and Canon Research launch project Guardian Lighthouse. You know how this bit goes please like, subscribe and ding the little bell so that YouTube shows you all our content. And if you'd like to directly help our work here at the Burr Pit you can also support us through Patreon. Links to that and everything else are in the description below. Week 3 of the Elite Racers Winter Olympic Games that we reported on a couple of weeks back takes place next Saturday and Sunday that's the 16th and 17th of March. Previous entries in the Winter Olympic series have featured events such as SRV Rallycross and Ship Stadium races but for this latest round of the competition the event will feature something a little different. Tower climbing and parkour in SRVs and on foot. Unlike the usual format with challenges like Buckyball these events are live races in multiplayer sessions. They're open for anyone to participate and there's no engineering required or indeed allowed. To find out more head to the Elite Racers Olympics forum thread which you'll find linked in the description below this video. A lot can happen in a week in Elite Dangerous. Cast your mind back one week from this broadcast and you'll remember us highlighting the first community wide assault on the Thargoid Titan Taranis. Almost exactly 24 hours after that edition of Witchspace News went live on Saturday the 2nd of March at 33.10 at 18.55 in game time Taranis exploded after its thermal core went into meltdown. You can find the video we shot of that event on screen now if you haven't seen it. In place of Taranis there is now an extremely dense caustic cloud that cannot currently be entered and Frontier have heavily hinted that eventually when the cloud dissipates we'll be able to explore the debris left behind in some fashion. As for the systems surrounding the former Titan Taranis there are still systems flooded with Thargoid vessels that are technically under Thargoid control but with no Titan to drive the war effort in the region there are no more systems surrounding the former Titan that are in a state of alert or invasion. Once those systems are brought in line there's no reason currently at least to believe that area won't eventually return to normality. Following the Taranis explosion community efforts turned towards the next target the Titan Lei Gong in HIP 8887. Right now the Titan has a defence level of very high which it's widely believed is linked to the number of systems it controls. In a post to the official forums today FDev let it be known that progress on the next Titans will be extremely slow unless that defensive level is reduced by clearing out the Thargoids and reclaiming the systems for humanity and so most of the major community groups are coordinating their efforts toward that goal whilst dealing with alerts and invasions around the other Titans. There's no getting away from it however we have one less Titan in the bubble. Our collective defensive and offensive might is more concentrated as a result and it's now just a matter of time before the other Titans fall just as Taranis did. Immediately following the events of last weekend FDev have clarified exactly what is required to be eligible to earn the paint jobs, arcs, decals and ship kits associated with each Titan assault. Those requirements are as follows. Firstly any contributing damage commanders do must happen in the 7 days before the Titan is destroyed. The damage must be done to the thermal core and it must be equal to or exceeding 2 million credits in combat bonds. That still isn't a huge amount of damage but also you can't just tickle the Titan you do have to actually participate. The weaker the Titan's defensive level the higher the combat bonds associated with it so for all sorts of reasons it's going to be worth wearing the Titan down before the assault begins in earnest. 
as there were some gameplay bugs experienced by some commanders in the run up to the explosion of Taranis, FDev have granted the Taranis decal and ship kit to anyone who entered the system around Taranis in the time after update 18 launched and before the titan exploded so if you were unable to do the damage that you were hoping but you were still in the system fear not you'll still get your stuff. To track the progress of the war check out the quite excellent dcoh.watch website. We also made a video giving our top tips for a successful titan assault which you can find linked on screen now and as always we'll still be monitoring the progress of the war on this channel. As soon as we see the community assault on a given titan begin we'll raise a flag here as soon as we're able. Five and a half years ago the engineer Ram Tar reported detecting three unusual energy signals emanating from deep space. At the time he requested the galaxy's independent pilots to investigate the regions that the signals came from without knowing what they would find if anything at all. After a search of those initial regions the community uncovered the first three huge ancient orbiting structures that became to be known as guardian beacons. Since their initial discovery the elite dangerous community has gone on to discover no less than 30 of these mysterious structures hovering in space. If you're unfamiliar with their operation and purpose in the game then here's a quick rundown of that information. When approached by a ship each of the initially dormant guardian beacons extends three large arm like energy pylon structures. When the tip of each energy pylon is fired on with an energy weapon it charges up and begins a countdown timer in a similar fashion to guardian surface installations. Once all three pylons have been charged up the beacon activates unfurling and rotating large parts of its superstructure and displaying arcing lightning like energy ribbons between the pylons and the main body. Once this is accomplished the beacon exposes its data core which can be scanned with a data link scanner. Once that core is scanned the beacon gives up a single ancient key. When activated each beacon also provides the location of a nearby guardian structure where the acquired ancient key can be used in the unlocking of the three guardian ship launched fighters. What other purpose the beacons might serve if indeed there ever was one is unknown. In the interests of further scientific discovery then and with a dash of just because it's there there is currently an initiative underway in the Canon Gnosis Discord server to perform a very complex and highly coordinated test on the 30 known guardian beacons. The test involves activating all 30 guardian beacons all at the same time in one massive coordinated effort just to see if anything happens. It's worth reiterating at this point that as best we can determine the beacons sole purpose in the game is to dish out ancient keys and then point at a nearby guardian site to aid in the acquisition of guardian SLFs nothing more. And I don't think anyone involved in the effort has any illusions that the activation if successful will have any other unexpected effects in the galaxy so they're not expecting a gateway to Raxler to open or a super weapon to fire or anything like that. I love that this kind of community digging, investigation and testing still goes on however and the sheer fact that this particular effort requires so much cat herding in order for it to happen just makes it all the more glorious a huge 07 to everyone involved and will always leave a little bit of room in our reasonable expectations to be surprised just in case. The current plan is for Project Guardian Lighthouse to make its attempt on the evening of the 16th of March UK time. If anything occurs we'll let you know right here unless of course it wipes out all life in the galaxy. Will you be watching the skies when Canon Research lights up the Guardian beacons? Are you perhaps climbing a tower in a car for the Winter Olympics? And are you planning on being there for the next Titan explosion? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.